Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Marcella Wimmuller Campioni, an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. This lecture was developed in collaboration with Dr. Eli Sagor and the Sustainable Forest Education Cooperative. This lecture is a part of a series of lecture on silviculture terminology, content, and theory. Today's lecture focuses on growing space, why it's important, and how as forest managers and silviculturists, it's key to our understanding of how we manage our forest systems. So what exactly is growing space? So growing space is the sum of all these factors a tree needs to grow. And some of these factors are part of the physical environment. So we can think about the water or the nutrients. Some of these factors are more abstract and represent site or space. But growing space is this kind of all-encompassing idea of all the sum of all the factors that a tree needs to grow. So throughout this lecture, I'm going to ask you to pause or stop to think um, or to read a definition. Um, and that's the great thing with video, right? You can pause me at the click of a button. So for this, I want you to pause the lecture and think about three parts of that growing space. So three factors that a tree needs to grow. So pause that lecture right now. So as we unpause the lecture, this slide is a great example of some of the factors that trees need to grow. So they need water, sunlight, suitable temperature, nutrients, carbon dioxide, oxygen. There's a lot of other factors and you may have come up with a different factor. And at the end of this lecture, you'll get my email address. I would encourage you, um, if you have a really unique idea, a comment, a thought, please feel free um, to email me. I, I would really look I really would be interested in your ideas and your thoughts on what trees need to grow. What, what is a unique sum factor that trees need to grow? So this also, this, these factors also bring us to an important concept called the law of minimums. So growing space is the sum of all those factors. But one of these factors is eventually going to become limiting. So trees are going to use each of these factors until there's something that limits their growth. And we can think of that in terms of a law of minimums. And we can use this barrel as an example. So we have this barrel with very different lengths of plank. Um, and it's filled with water. And eventually that water is going to hit that shortest plank. And let's say, for example, this plank represents nitrogen. So when nitrogen becomes limiting, that limits tree growth. So we can add more nitrogen, right? We can fertilize the site. However, if we fertilize the site, maybe water becomes limiting. So there's always going to be some factor that limits growth. So now that we've kind of talked about growing space and why it's important, we can think about now that trees are gathering this resource, using the growing space, what are they doing with? And I'm going to ask you to draw back on an introduction biology, ecology, silviculture course, and think about how trees allocate their resources. So pause the lecture and write down the six, six things that trees need to allocate photosynthesis to. So as we unpause, so the first thing that trees need to do is they need to maintain. They need to do maintenance respiration. Then they move on to foliage and fine root production. Primary growth, remember we grow first up before we grow out. So we have to, we increase in height before we put on that secondary growth of diameter. Then we allocate resources to reproductive, such as flower and seeds. And then this last one, defense against insects and diseases. That's a little tricky one. So that one can shift depending on if the tree is under stress, if the tree is being attacked. That can move up the priority list. So now that we've talked about the individual tree, I want to move a little bit to talk more about stand stand level processes, such as succession and stand dynamics. And concepts of succession and stand dynamics 
are foundational to the study of silviculture and forest management. So again, we have you have the power to pause me. So I don't need to read this full definition to you. Um, but I do want to highlight a few key points that succession is the orderly process or replacement of individuals within the communities. Um, so there's various definitions, various um, aspects when we consider succession, but Clement's idea of succession really relies on this orderly and predictable process of, of community establishment and growth. So succession um, can come in many different forms and in the eastern United States, in the Great Lakes, succession has, has occurred after old field abandonment. So we see this orderly progression from a field that was once farmed as it moves through different stages of, of, of plant communities into this more climax communities. Um, succession in the, east, in the southeast or the western United States might involve fire. So there's many different processes, many different aspects that can can move a, a forest through succession. Stand dynamics is another kind of critical component. Um, and the definition is here, so feel free to pause at any time. And stand dynamics, there's still this progress of stand development through time, but it also includes this really important component of disturbance and it can be less predictable. So stand dynamics really takes into account these both small and large scale disturbances when we think about stand structure and stand composition. So in this figure, we have this very classical diagram um, from Oliver and Larson. Um, and Oliver and Larson propose four stages of stand development, like stand initiation, stem exclusion, understory reinition, reinitiation and the old growth stage. And while there can be predictability and orderly fashion to the movement of these communities, it doesn't have to be. So for example, um, a stand in the stem exclusion phase, we can use our silviculture tools, we can use management, and we can move that stage depending on how, depending on the techniques, the tools we use, we can move it from the stem exclusion stage very quickly to the old growth stage um, with it would have these characteristics that of species of composition of structure that place it in that old growth stage also we could have a disturbance whether it's natural or um, human cause to move that that stage back to the stand initiation stage so it doesn't have to just move forward or backwards and the time that a stand may stay in one of these stages can really vary. And these four stages work well for some forests. They don't work well for all forests. Um, and there are other models out there. So Jerry Franklin and colleagues have developed models for a uh, forest, forest in the coastal west. Um, scientists like Kevin O'Hara uh, have developed and colleagues have developed uh, develop models for the Intermountain West. So there are multiple models out there. So growing space, I really hope I'm, I'm kind of stressing the importance of why, why this, why you're listening to a lecture on, <laughs> on growing space. So, um, so as a stand develops, the amount of growing space doesn't really change. What changes is how it's allocated. And with management, we can allocate growing space to certain species or a certain age class. Um, so this concept is really critical um, to silviculture, to forest management. And since the amount of growing space doesn't change on the site, what really does change how growing space is allocated is disturbance. And these disturbances can be natural, such as wind throw. So they can be small or large. They can be natural, such as wind throw. They could also be man-made, such as harvesting. Um, and especially when we think about man-made disturbance or silvicultural system, 
we are allocating, we are choosing how we are allocating growing space. So the death or the removal or harvest of an individual tree or a group of tree changes how that growing space is allocated and changes how, changes the species composition and structure of that stand. So we really, so bringing this all together, um, we use this information on silvix, on disturbance history, on the site, on, um, on disturbance dynamics to change how growing space is allocated. And as a silviculturist, as a manager, you are essentially managing for growing space. And in these management treatments, tools, prescriptions, we can favor certain species, we can mimic natural disturbances, but essentially, again, we are changing how growing space is allocated. So hopefully after this, this 10 to 15 minute lecture, um, you really come to appreciate how important the concept of growing space is to silviculture. And I just want to review a few key aspects. So growing space is the sum of the site resources used by a tree or stand. These factors, these sum of the factors, there's always going to be something that limits them. And that is the law of the minimum. So there's always one factor that's limiting. And as trees use these resources, they prioritize how they use them, going back to that allocation list. And then finally, as forest managers, as silviculturists, treatments shift how growing space is allocated and influence structure, composition, and stand development. So that ends our lecture today. Uh, my email is mwind at uofm.edu. Please feel free to send me an email with questions or comments.